All right, we're ready for our second video from Unit 3. This is a very short video. Um, it's about linear approximation. And um, basically, it allows me to use a line to approximate a value. That's the general idea, OK? So now, let's get more specific about that. So um, if I have a curve, and curves usually are made up of equations that, are, that can be nasty. They don't have to be, but they could be. So you remember from last unit that we can find the equation of a tan line that goes right through a point. Um, to a curve uh, by finding the derivative and writing that line. Okay, so what I'm saying is, um, and you'll see why this is easy in a second, if I want to find something that's just slightly bigger than A, because that guy's there, right there, that one is at A, F of A, if I want to find something just a little bit bigger than A, well, I could also find what it is on the line, and that line would be pretty close to what it would be on the curve, not perfect, but close. Well, that's what we're going to do. Um, and we're going to basically use um, our equation of our tan line, which you guys already know. Now, we've been comfortable with our tan line as being y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, today, because we want to solve for the actual y value, uh, we're going to be using that form of a tan line, but we're going to go ahead and take the negative y1 over, and so we're going to have a y plus 1. So you'll notice here in this equation, this equation is the same as this. I don't know if you guys realize that. This is saying that the equation for our tan line is equal to, let's skip to this, the derivative at A is just slope. Boom. X minus A is using the value that we're plugging in for X, and then F of A is the Y value. So guys, this is a fancy version of just the equation of a line. So let's see it in practice. Okay, so I've got the square root of x, and I want to approximate, eventually, what the square root of 1.1 is. Well, do you know the square root of 1.1 off the top of your head? I doubt it. But what I'm saying to you is this. If this is the graph of what, oops, if this is the graph of what a square root looks like, and 1 is right here, that's 1, then if I were to draw a line tangent to the graph, then if I plug in 1.1 to that line, which is much easier to solve, then I'm going to be pretty close to what 1.1 would be for the actual curved graph. So that's my plan. Okay, so the first part you've done a thousand times, guys. We want the equation of the tan line at x equals 1. Okay, we need slope, which is the derivative, and we need a point. The slope or the derivative of this, remember the derivative of root x is 1 half, x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 root x. That's just one of those derivatives you should know. I want the slope specifically at 1, okay? That's 1 over 2 root 1, which is 1 half. So the slope I'm going to use is 1 half, and my point that I need for my tan line is 1, whatever I get when I plug in 1, 1. So, again, most of you are used to seeing it written, written like this, right, with the slope out front, but we are going to move this over so that it is perfectly solved for y which means I'm just adding the y here. So if I wanted to go right to here, I would do one, I would do the slope times x minus the x value, and then plus the y value, because I'm, I've already brought it over, so you don't have to do like the opposite sign. Okay, so then how do I use that to approximate it? Well, remember, this tan line, as long as you're close to one, is pretty close to what the curve is. So I'm just gonna plug in 1.1 here and see what 1.1 would give me. Okay, let's see. Half of, this is 0.1 plus 1. Now, I would change this to a fraction, which is 1 tenth. So I get 1 20th plus 1, which is 21 20ths, which is a much closer approximation than me trying to do this as a decimal. Okay, let's look at example 2. So example 2 says f is a twice differentiable function. That just means you can take the second derivative and the first derivative. We know the point f of 1 gives me negative 2. We know the derivative at 1 is 2, and the double second derivative at 1 is 1. So what is the value um, of the approximation of 0.9 using the line tangent? Okay. So, well, first of all, I need to create the line tangent at 1. So we need the slope and a point. The point is going to be whatever you get when you plug in 1. So we already know from this that it's negative 2. The slope, well, we're going to need the derivative. Well, good news, we actually have the derivative at 1. It was part of what was given to us, 2. So we know the slope is 2. Let's write our equation. 
Now normally I would do y minus, but remember I'm going to do this different version. So I'm going to do y equals my slope times x minus my x, and then this time instead of doing y minus negative 2, I'm going to just add the y, which means that it stays a negative 2 on this side. There's the equation. But then they want us to plug in 0.9 to see what it's close to. So now I'm going to plug in 0.9. And I get 2 times negative 0.1, which is 1 tenth. So I have 2 times negative 1 tenth minus 2. This is negative 1 fifth minus 2. Change this into a fifth. So I get negative 11 fifths. And I can continue to do that with tons of different functions, guys. I can do that with quadratic functions. Again, the idea here is the same. If I give you the function, though, of course, you should be able to plug in things like, um, let's see, let's do e to the x. I'm just throwing an extra example in here. Let's do e to the x, um, but we'll do it at the point at x equals 1. And I'm going to use that then to approximate what I would get if instead of 1, maybe I plugged in 1.1. So again, something cl it has to be something close, otherwise it doesn't really make sense. Okay, well, that means I would need the slope or the derivative at 1. So well, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, which means you're going to have e to the 1. So the slope is e, and the point we're going to go through is 1, whatever I get when I plug in 1. When I plug in 1, I get e to the first, or just e. Here's my equation. y equals the slope x minus my x value plus my y value. Okay, then I'm going to plug in my approximation. I get e. This is 0 0.1. 0 0.1, though, is 1 tenth, as, as we've discussed. So here I get e over 10 plus e, and then I can make common denominators. So I get e plus 10e over 10 or 11e over 10. That is approximately what e to the 1.1 is. That's what this is doing. Okay, that's what this whole process is doing. All right, good luck on the problem sets. These should be much easier than the related rates, and I'll see you in class.